Don't worry, it'll only be me. I won't take any other pictures. All right, guys. So, uh, am I, are you, is it recording? Cool. So, I really had nothing planned until about five minutes ago. Actually, two minutes ago. Middle of the last song. Because God has a word for all of us because of what's coming down the pipe. Uh, us as believers, us as a church, the body of Christ. Uh, and I think we need to be strengthened in the Lord because it's not going to feel comfortable. Um, Elijah, give me some water. Um, it won't feel comfortable, but that's the point, is feelings are based on what you, what's the root word of the word feeling? Feel. Feel. Eel. Slippery things, yeah. Yeah, eel. Uh, so... But even though things are, we did a song, uh, Story I'll Tell, uh, the hour is dark. And I believe that's exactly correct. But God is not dark. In him is no darkness. And if you are hid with Christ in God, Colossians 3.3, 3, this darkness come near you. No. In fact, the light shines on you. And then you wonder, regardless of the circumstances, you may be flying high as a kite, and you, you are watching stuff down here, and you're thinking, oh man, they got it rough. Let me tell you this. It, it, this is an injunction to all of us. Yes, we do see the things there. Stay away from them. Stay away from what you... It will be, you are walking forward. I, I remember having a vision many, many years ago. Uh, even before I was a believer, it was this scene in Saving Private Ryan. The people were walking in the field, you know, soldiers in the field. There's bombs going off in the distance, but they're this little unit, probably seven or eight guys. And they're seeing out there. It's not coming near them. And that is how we ought to be. We have a job. We have an objective. We have an objective. We have stuff to do. What is that big boy doing? And, uh, uh, and they will distract us. There are things that will distract us. So go to Psalm 23. And I'm going to be jumping here, guys. Father, thank you for your word. It is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Jesus, I thank you for the words you have given as a guidepost, as a bedrock, to continually look at you. Jesus, we need you. And we need you to keep us firm. You say if we are not firm in our faith, we're not firm at all. You tell us if we cannot walk with walkers, we will not run with runners. You tell us to build up on your most holy word. Jesus, you tell us what you think of the things of this earth. And the way you demonstrated that is the cross. That's what you say about it. You say it's a system of vileness and rottenness and corruption. And I bid the world cheerfully, not cheerfully, as Leonard Ravenhill said. Thank you, Jesus, that you are our portion and you give us what we need, though all flesh fail. Thank you, Jesus. Your name, Jesus, I pray. 
that you would quicken us, help us stir our spirit, help us against these trials to keep focus to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So Psalm 23, uh, go to verse 4. Ramon, what version do you have? In the, can, can you read that verse, please? <laughs> Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Jen, what do you have? Read that, please. Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me. For you already have. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I'll never be lonely. For you are near. And you have the ESV, Kathy, right? Yeah, mine's the same as well. I mean, it's the same, same. Okay. I have HCSV. Even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. What's, the, what's amazing is fear is a... If God, there's no fear in Him. Fear is a circumstantial, it's an earthly, tangible concept and it's strictly founded where we are in this not to get metaphysical this dimension and you will only experience fear here do you guys you guys catch that you will only experience fear here when you're in God's presence you don't experience it my wife will never experience fear anymore none she experienced fear here on earth not anymore, because in Him is fullness. In your presence, there's fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 16. Fear was brought onto this earth, not willingly. When Satan got kicked out of the garden, fear came with him. Fear is the sensation that God could be gone. Do you understand in hell you are enveloped in fear and it grips you and there's no way around it and it's eternal. And do we understand that the gospel that Jesus can live in you and you do as he did that's to all, not just men and women, creation speaking over the land, speaking over circumstances. We did the song, I Speak Jesus. I speak Jesus over every enemy, every dark hole, uh, stronghold, every single battle. Do you guys understand, um, uh, you guys recently got married. Do you guys understand you are now a witness of what a Christian marriage should be testifying to all marriages before and all marriages afterwards. So when you're wondering, man, I'm having all these things against my marriage. Well, you better believe it. You signed up for it. You're on display. You're on display just as Jesus was on that cross. And now you guys have kids. You're on display what it looks like. You are testifying to God's faithfulness. And God says, I'm using you. And I'm proving who I am through you. Do you new married? Do you older married? And you will fear no evil. Because Pastor Carter said once, we are, the, we are all that's left on this earth. We're all that's left. So, we were talking earlier that people speak, oh yes, walk in faith, do this, do that. Then you go ahead and do it and watch all of hell come against you. Go ahead and walk by faith. Not just say it, do it. Take up your cross. We love, even though I go through the darkest valley, we will walk. This is, C.S. Lewis called this the shadow lands. I fear no danger. No danger comes to my sensation. No danger comes to my presence. Here's why. One, you're with me. Two, your rod 
your correction, and your staff. They comfort me. Your authority and your ability to use it. Who's experienced the love and correction of God? How many of you guys said thank you to it? Not always. Not always, but yes. Not usually. <laughs> Start saying thank you more often. Amen. Start saying thank you more often. He is saving your life. He is walking you through that dark valley by that. And you, you, you should be saying thank you that you're walking me through this. Okay? So, in the movie Pilgrim's Progress, Christian and Hopeful were ensnared by the flatterer. Oh, yeah. And in the book, now this may be, I don't know, somebody may have a fit with this, but you know what, get over it, because it's the best-selling book outside of the Bible, translated into over 2,000 languages, Pilgrim's Progress, to which John Bunyan himself said, this is a book of little worth. Christian and, and Hopeful are taken over the knee of Shepherd, and he spanks him with a rod. And you know what they say? Thank you that you love me enough to correct me. You have saved our lives. So, his rod and his staff correct us. They guide us. They keep us alive. Why? Because if you don't turn you are not a faithful witness. And he says, I can't use you. I can't trust you. If you cannot receive the little things, I will not trust you with, with, with big things. You say you want to go hard for the Lord? Submit to the little things. When he says, yeah. stop getting angry at you kids. Now, you didn't say that kindly to so-and-so. Uh... You know, pick up that thing that you uh, you want to shove in your pockets. Or how about, why are you taking credit for yourself? Or why didn't you say, you know what, it was all Jesus, I don't know that. So, uh, go to Psalm, excuse me, no, Isaiah... I want to say Isaiah 26. Yeah, I do. Uh, no, hang on a minute. Oh. Ramon, I need a little help here. Um, where is it in Isaiah where he says, you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Ah. Mm-hmm. I think we're doing a Bible sword drill charge. Isaiah 30, 21. Sorry. I know very little about my Bible. I thought I knew I'm uh, guilty. I'm just... We need to be pouring into this word. I'm, I'm guilty. Sorry. I, I, I'm, yeah. Oh, God help us. 30 or 31? 30 verse 21. We need to remember this. That's in verse 20. 19. Uh, For your people will live on Sion in Jerusalem, which is the parched land. Guys, we're living on a parched land. What is this parched land? Parched, uh, dry, uh, cracked. Like, I mean, look at my hands. I didn't put any lotion on it. I mean, it, it's, it's dry and cracked. That's parched. Parched, yeah. He's still parched. Yeah. Uh, he will, and will never cry again. He will show favor to you at the sound of your cry. When he hears, he will answer you. The Lord will give you meager, which is a small amount of bread and water during oppression. But your teacher 
will not hide himself any longer. Your eyes will see your teacher. And whenever you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear this command behind you. This is the way to walk in it. Then you will defile your silver-plated idols and your gold-plated images. You will throw them away like menstrual call, claws and call them filth. Guys, you know, what's amazing is that we have to first be willing to agree with God with what He says. If you feel that... Um, you feel like that burning in, in, in your belly. You're like, oh man, I just, yes, listen, listen. That's the Holy Spirit trying to get your attention. The moment you do something and boom, and you're like, oh man, something's not right. Listen. I think we're so numb. I think we're so numb. We don't slow down enough. Sister shared. She got so busy with serving the church, she couldn't hear God. It broke my heart. Thankfully, that's not the case anymore. The world is spiraling fast out of control. And Jesus showed what he thought about the world and other schemes and plans but being hung on a cross. Where if God stands still on that cross and everybody wants to carry on as if nothing happened. Hurry up, get the body down so we can, we can have the Passover. What? You just killed a righteous man and you can have the Passover? The world wants nothing to do with holiness. The world wants nothing to do with loss. I will say, we do need to preach resurrection to those who are crying out for life. But those who think they have life, we need to cry out holiness and the cross. The wicked are the ones who take the name of God upon their lips. If you look at all the Psalms, Psalm 139, the wicked take the name of God upon their lips and they don't do it. They say they love God, but their actions are like, oh, yes, Lord, I love you. Here, bless his job decision. Did you even consult him as to what to do? Did you even get on your face and say, Lord, you're in charge. I don't know what to do. I have this option, this option. I got I to gotta make this purchase and this. This is your money. What do you want me to do? The wicked will say, Lord, you have blessed me. Now I'm going to go do this job. Just, just bless me in my work. I saw a movie, Evans to Betsy. She said, uh, God is going to show up. Really? You think he's going to sign off on your book deal? And at the end, she says, Lord, I realize now that you answer prayer according to your will, not mine. You're the Lord. You're the master. Let me, let me get in line with what you're doing. Mark 16, guys, there is a dying world and there is a world that curses God. And sadly, it's the religious ones that will curse God. Why? Because you're upsetting their apple cart. You're coming along and just kicking it over. David Wilkinson says, you are their personal executioner. Sorry. And you know what? Stepping in faith does that. Why? We live by faith, not by sight. <laughs> It's going to test your holiness. It's going to test your resolve. Psalm 119. And, and I know I spoke about feelings. And I'll get to that. Um, so, this, in the past few days since Leanne went home, he's been telling me, actually past couple days, are you going to still love me? When you don't have anything to go off, all you have is what you're reading here. Not even Holy Spirit promises that you got. Not any of that. Are you going to hold on to Psalm 119, verse 105? Your word is a lamp for my feet and light unto my path. Though I walk in the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil because you're with me. 
If you feel nothing, you experience nothing. Sorry, I know I'm going to offend a lot of people in a charismatic Pentecostal movement. Yes, we do experience God. Watch Manin makes a statement. When you get to the presence of God at the end of your life, He's not going to ask you how much doctrine you memorized or how much dancing or shouting you had for the Lord or how many warm fuzzies you had. You know what he's going to ask you? How many scars do you have on you, on your body, or in your heart that Jesus delivered you from? How many of those do you have? How many times can you count you have been faithful here? Your word said this, I held on to it, and you, you showed up. That's what he'll ask you. Did you learn to love? Loving is risky. You get no pleasure out of it. There is a reward for love. Sometimes it's not warm fuzzies. It's not. It was not pleasant when my wife died. It wasn't. But I said, I screamed and cried. I said, thank you, Jesus, for 16 years. Send me another one. To bring another one home. To rescue one more. Even if I never see them again, I don't care. Give me another one to disciple. Give me another one to rescue. Give me another one, Jesus. Give me another one to take to the cross. To be fruitful. Not just to produce fruit. To produce trees that bear more fruit. That produce more trees. And produce more trees. People are having physical problems. Plagues and diseases. Nathaniel had to take to the hospital. And he said, Daddy, are you willing to give me up to the Lord? I said, oh God. He ended up having walking pneumonia. No clue. I said, Nathaniel, you know I can't hold you back from Jesus. Of course, I give you to the Lord. He said, Daddy, I don't want you to be angry at God. My kids are ready for the offerings. Are y'all? You ready to give it up? You ready to walk that cross? The Via Dolorosa, the way of suffering, the way of the cross, the way, as you know, as you lose, you know you gain resurrection. You will not experience resurrection unless you know what you've been delivered from. You can't. You can't. This cross has got to be preached in Christian circles. Resurrection needs to be preached to those who have no life. The cross needs to be preached to those who have no loss. Are you comfortable yet? Have you moved 40 times in three years? Have you been kicked out? Interrogated? Never see your father for 10? Uh, never see your father? Ever? After 10 years? Till you're deaf? That's the price we pay. We sang a song, my heart is yours and at the end, all for Jesus I surrender. Mm. All for him I give when it's comfortable. Is that what it said? Mm -hmm. I, what, what's that word? Freely give. Freely give. Do you want to be a special forces or do you just want to be a cook? Are you comfortable with your walk? Or are you willing to risk it all? Are you willing to risk it all for Jesus? It's worth it. He's worth it. We think, is he worthy? Yes, he's worthy. Then give him everything. And be willing to lose it all. I don't care how you feel. I love the Star Wars reference when... He kicks Chewbacca into the garbage chute. He says, I don't care what you smell, get in there. I don't care what you feel, get in that battle. Love is risky, you'll get shot at. Go to Hebrews. Excuse me, no. Nope. Change of plan. You want Holy Spirit preaching? This is Holy Spirit preaching. I have no idea what I'm doing. But I'm just listening. Two words. Second Timothy Verse 3. 2 Timothy 2, verse 3. This is going to test our resolve. 
because what we feel will not match up with what he says. Your experience wants to cloud your vision. Don't let it. Has he shown you a heavenly vision? That's why it's so important. I share with people, get a vision for your family. Not your vision, his vision. Not television either. Not internet vision. His vision. Get his vision. Get what he says. That way you know that you're going to run hard after him. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in the concerns of civilian life. He seeks to please the recruiter. Verse 8, keep your attention on Jesus Christ who's risen from the dead and descended from David. This is according to my gospel. I suffer for it to the point of being bound like a criminal. But God's message is not bound. I'm just going to be preaching over this. I don't care. 1 Timothy 6, verse 7. Verse 6, excuse me. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out. But if we have food and clothing, we'll be content with these. Verse 11, but you men of God run from these things. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of feelings. Is that what it says? No! For the faith, take hold of eternal life. That you were called to have made a good confession about in the presence of many witnesses. This is who we follow. This is what we do. Let me read to you from, Miguel, from Madame Bouillon. Dealing with feelings. This, this is the capstone. That, now that we have explored some of the encounters, it's called distraction. You will have in this venture some of the things the Lord will introduce to you and some of the things he will demand from you. Let us set this chapter aside for practical matter. As you've read previous chapters, there will be distractions, especially at the onset. Outset, excuse me. And for quite some time afterward, your mind will be distracted from prayer. Let us take a brief look at this problem. How do you deal with those things that distract? How do you handle those things that draw you away from the inmost part of your being? If you should sin, or even if it is only a matter of being distracted by some circumstances around you, what should you do? You must instantly turn within to your spirit. Once you have departed from God, you must return to him as quickly as possible. There, once more with him, receive any penalty he chooses to inflict. Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. One, uh, but here's one thing you must be careful, very careful about. Do not become distressed because your mind has wandered away. You'll, it'll happen. Always guard yourself from being anxious because of your faults. First of all, such distress only stirs up the soul and distracts you to outward things. Secondly, your distress really springs up from a secret root. Come on, guys. T I, I, okay, I want to hear everybody say, I receive the correction of the Lord. I receive the correction of the Lord. Amen, I receive the correction of the Lord. Secondly, your distress really springs from a secret root of pride. What you're experiencing is, in fact, a love of your own worth. Let me say that again, nice and loud. What you are experiencing is in fact a love of your own worth. We think we're something special. And that's self. To put it in other words, you are simply hurt and upset at seeing <laughs> what you really are. If the Lord should be so merciful as to give you a true spirit of His humility, you will not be surprised at your faults, your failures, or your even basic nature. The more clearly you see your true self, the clearer you also see how miserable how miserable your self-nature really is. And the more you will abandon your whole being to God, seeing that you have such a desperate need of Him, you will press toward a more intimate relationship with Him. This is the way you should walk, just as the Lord Himself has said, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eyes. Um, in the movie Courageous, he says, the, the pastor, after the there's a death and um, somebody lost a loved one, he said, learning, you know, when someone loses a family member, they, they say it is akin to living with an amputation. You, you're not the same. 
you, you do walk through it. You're not the same. But you have an intimacy with Jesus that nobody else can understand. Folks, guys, I asked for this. I signed up for it. I said, Lord, whatever you got to do, you know I'm yours. A testimony of his faithfulness. I pray that nobody ever loses a loved one, but I pray you experience Jesus in a way that whatever it is, that you grow in that. And sad to say, it may cost the life of somebody you love. What are you holding on to? Ask the Lord, Jesus, what am I holding on to that I can't put on your altar? He, he says, I have yet many things to tell you, but what? You can't bear them? You can't trust children with jewels. They'll drop it. The cross is for the mature. How much do you want to go with him? Or do you just want to... Look, I know what I say on hard words, but I'm not saying them. That's the Lord. He says, forsake everything and follow me. Relationships? Let people hurt you so that you can love them. Let them say all manners of filth. You are their only representative of Jesus Christ. I had a friend say, what do I do? This person is just abusive. I said, you better get back in there in that fight. You better go love them. Because that's what's required of you. And I'm not saying that lightly. Because I've seen people do that. I've, I've personally experienced that. The Lord had to break me. I worked with a very difficult individual. Threatened to kill me. Nearly pulled me off a 40 foot height. I yelled at him and God said, you better go apologize. And I said, Lord, he nearly killed me. He said, and he didn't even address it. He said, you better go apologize. Okay. I've had nine months of this. And God was teaching me to love. Love is doesn't care about your feelings. Love doesn't care about what gush you're going to get. Let's face it. You're not going to get any gush in this life. Especially 2021 and further on. Are you going to still hold to the Lord and His Word? There will be times you will not feel His presence. There will be times you will not feel it. And all you can do is cry. All you can do is hurt. Even before Leanne died, I, I experienced it. All you can, that's, and, and, and you'll, you'll go through that. Are you going to say, Jesus, I don't care. I love you. Take whatever you want. I love you. Because it says his word endures forever. Not yours. His. Not your feelings. Not even his feelings. He got angry at the Pharisees. He had righteous anger. He has righteous anger over sin. That doesn't change. But are you going to hold on to your promise that you made to him? Are you going to stick to your vow in sickness and in health, in rich and in poor, through thick and thin, till what? Death do us part? He died. He held on to his promise. Are you ready to hold on to yours? Your death or someone else's death? I know I'm speaking a lot of from personal testimony. How else do we see the Lord? But through our experiences. His word is there. It's, it's spirit and truth. Side by side. Be encouraged. If you're walking this road, be encouraged. You are on the right path. I'm not saying don't enjoy what God gives you here on this earth. Absolutely. Give him thanks. Uh, it said in a previous video, I just knelt down and said, thank you, God, you gave me a free cup of coffee. There were a couple of people looking at me, are you all right, sir? And this is in a hospital. I said, I'm fine. I told Jesus, thank you, give me a free cup of coffee. And an individual told me she saw the whole thing. She said, normal people don't do that. They don't just kneel down and say, it's like, that's like not proper. Since when is God proper? Since when do I care about personal opinion of men? I'm a servant of Christ. Galatians 1.10. I will thank him at every opportunity. 
I don't care how foolish I look. You're doing it for the king. You're doing it for your love. Take a chance. Take a risk. Be bold. If you want to start dancing for Jesus, do it. Just please not in the street when there's traffic. Okay? All in good order. But by the same token, if you know the right thing to do, do it. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Your feelings come and go. It starts in the little things. And then he'll trust you with the big things. And what's amazing about the whole thing is at the end, you'll say, I was just an undeserving servant, a worthless servant. I was just doing what I was asking. And that is encouraging because that shows the intimacy you have with Jesus. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for teaching us to trust you, for being willing to give it up, being willing to suffer loss so we can have you. Thank you, oh Jesus, for what you're teaching us. Help us, oh Lord, to be sensitive to your leading. In Jesus' name, amen.